Okay, what is virtual dom in React? So virtual dom basically uh, it is a in memory representation of uh, real dom. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, whenever any changes happen in our app, so virtual dom uh, will basically have the previous dom uh, render. So it's basically going to calculate the difference between the previous DOM representation and the current DOM representations. And once the once it identify like what are the changes uh, it has to do, so only mm -hmm. those changes it's going to apply into the real DOM. So this is like how virtual DOM works. So, if we have some, uh, say, two pages, and I want to send the data from one page to another page. Yeah. Get that. How to do that? So, there are a couple of ways, like, uh, uh, to send the data. Like, uh, either we can, uh, we can, we can use here props. So, through props, we can send the data from one page to other. Or we can use here a Redux state management library to share the data between the pages. Uh, there is also called context API. I, I, I haven't used that one. So mm. is that also it possible? Okay. Um, so First way you what you told like one is context or the first one. The first one is props like props. Uh, props. Okay. Okay. Props. Um, it will work when there is a parent-child relation. Yeah, right? parent-child. What but if they, there is no parent-child relation between two components or UI pages? Yeah, when says there is no connection, then then obviously mm -hmm. uh, when we can use context or. Redux state management. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, with an example, can you uh, tell me like uh, um, how can I make use of Redux? Yeah. Take any example, two pages. You want to send some data from page one to page two. Uh, like uh, you are spending, sending the data. From mm. page one to two. Mm. Say in page one we have some data like uh, input field is there, username mm. and mm. Uh, is employee ID, employee name and employee ID. Okay. Yeah. So there is a next button. Okay. So user enters some like his name and uh, ID, and then presses next. It goes to page two. There I want uh, that employee name and ID. Okay. And and there is no parent-child relation. It is independent page, you can say. Okay. So, uh, in those scenario, uh, um, like we are using here router, you are saying like React router, like we have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, like uh, whatever the information is, uh, filled by user, so there is other way we can do like uh, once the user like submit the details in the form and and if you click on the next button, we can uh, we can basically save the data on local storage as well. Then on the next page we can retrieve those data as well. So with local storage also it can it can be achieved. Hmm. And okay. uh, with with Redux also we can like uh, we can define one global state and uh, okay okay can you can share your screen okay yeah. can you share your screen and uh, um, say with using Redux how you can achieve this yeah uh, I'll open Notepad you can, and... you can yeah Notepad or any editor anything is fine whatever you prefer okay. 
Even VS Code, if you if you yeah, have, you can uh, make use of it. VS Code. You can make use of it. No problem. So, on. Uh, so I want one complete complete flow like um, using Redux, right? Using Redux, I want a complete flow. Data being uh, passed from one page to another page. So can I use your uh, Redux toolkit or yes. uh, something? Uh, Yes. Okay. Whatever so, you feel it. Yeah. Okay. So let's Some syntax might be off, but uh, no worries. Uh, and I, yeah, yeah, that's why I initially told I am not worried about syntax. So, okay, so first uh, we will. Uh, this action this way normally get this. Uh, let me just make it set user info not get so we we have this action set user info mm. and yeah. whenever like from component like the whole mm. page one you can say Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you have, uh, yeah, let's make it page one here. Mm. And we have in here a dispatch. dispatch. And, uh, like, we have a form, so it's what I'm having a handle for it. Mm. And we will having some state as well form form. Mm -hmm. uh, like set so having use state. Let's say it's having a name mm -hmm. and age. And mm -hmm. first we will do like e dot right default. So in the return part we will having like two input build. So 
Will having a change So uh, we'll have like a, a net button here. Mm. So, Not required. Just say next. That's it. No need to add button. Okay. So just next. Mm. Okay, fine. So, so once you are basically either yeah, once you just click on like. Mm. Next button. Next button. So, mm. so we will have the information. So we created this action set user info, mm. and we will pass this info which holder name and age. And mm. after that, uh, obviously we have to navigate. So we can use here use navigate after mm. which page we wanted to basically navigate. So navigate and we want to navigate to page two. Mm. Now on page two, we will mm. have another um, like page. So here, uh, and here we have to use here use selector to extract the state. So since this uh, reducer we we did we didn't hook up with our store. So mm. like uh, like a uh, um port default store there is uh, one method we use um we have to use it. Uh, I'm not remembering the method to basically we wanted to give the reducer name actually. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like uh, normally it does is create a store, but uh, I'm going to put it in. That's fine, no problem. Uh, so let's suppose like we have hook up a uh, reducer, mm -hmm. uh, like. We have like app and I'm giving this user slice. So we can access the state with this key, like whatever we have defined that is user property. So you can use here like state uh, state dot app and and we have stored the information here like user info. So here we can target this user info and mm. on this we can teach structure name and age value. Mm. So mm. we can show 
Okay, that is fine. No problem. No need to write that. Fine. We'll proceed with next question. Okay. Um, so, have you worked on async await? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, can you write some sample? Yeah. yeah. So, you can use new file. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, let's uh, we have a fetch method one. Fetch data. So here we are having a thing, mm. and uh, let's suppose we are getting some response or it. Mm. We are using HCS. And here we'll be having our URL. URL, okay. And uh, if you have defined any state to store, then like mm. you you like that data and sorry, mm. data and response store data thing. Mm. And you may use this page data and you use it. So on first render, it will fetch the data. Okay, how to call this method now? Fetch yeah, data. Oh. Sorry. So use effect. Uh, we can call this here. Fetch data. I mean, it depends on, like, you can call a normal method as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to fetch the data on initial render, then you can call it here. Mm -hmm. Okay, why we need a sync await here? Without, if you remove that, then also it works, right? Uh, here we are making an a API call, so it, ha it, it will take like some time uh, to fetch the data from the API. If you remove this async await, then also it works, right? I can get the data. Since this function is asynchronous, so we have to make this async. Uh, it might get called, uh, the API will get called, but it will be pending this state actually. You won't get data. The API will get called, but it will be pending state if you uh, like open the network tab. So it has to mm -hmm. like uh, resolve promise. So that's the reason Avid is using here. Mm -hmm. um, suppose there is one, um, suppose there is a tab, UI tab, right? Yeah. And uh, likewise, when I log in, I have two pages, okay? So in that case, when I log in, it goes to first tab and it fires some Ajax score. It makes some Ajax score, okay? Okay. And then um, immediately user selects the second tab. Okay. So now I want to cancel this first Ajax call. I don't know whether it has returned or no, but I want to cancel that Ajax call. So JavaScript is single threaded or multi threaded? So it is single thread actually. Okay, uh, okay, fine. I'm done with my questions. If you have any questions for me. Yeah, 